the end plan effectively moves to this one here, the combination which includes office. So this is still kind of an end plan idea. So we're not, we're not changing enterprise fees, right? No, not touching oh, enterprise fees at all. all right. So if you're only doing E, question answer. Thank you. Come again. <laughs> <laughs> Another benefit of doing E is friends don't let friends sell <coughs> fee plans. <laughs> we, that's as much. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Don't take it to personal. Back row. Yeah, that look. Yeah, back row, please. Can you elaborate on those RDS license rights? Can you, so does one of your five licenses, can you install on a desktop and then also just have it in a term, in a, remote into a server room? Can you see that? At this point in time, as we stand today, Robert, Robert, can you come down in one of your licenses room? can be used as an RDS cow, yes. Okay? From 1st of October, right, if you're on an M or a P, that won't be the case. But on E, you can on e always, a problem, always fine. Okay. So my understanding, the RDS account is e-plans, the TF box does not consume a and you just want to consume as part of the box. Yeah. So Dana? The FOP <coughs> in the exchange plans, yeah. does that also run on the desktop or is it just on the cloud? It's all done through the cloud. It's not on the desktop. It's part of the infrastructure of Exchange. So it's not, it's just handling the mail. It's not handling the user's desktop. That's correct. It's all done. It's basically the spam malware filter of how that gets right. thrown into okay. the junk mail and all that stuff. Uh, back row quickly and then back row. Go ahead, sir. Another problem I have with upgrades, you can be pretty much within the E, within the E SKUs, is uh, I know it's an annual commit, but I, like I told a customer on Exchange only, because they weren't ready to replace machines yet, and, they had, and so we were like, okay, well, once we get ready to replace machines, we'll move you to E3. Yeah. And it's and then it's my my go in there and change the licensing. It says oh, I'm going to charge you cancellation uh, cancellation fee. There's you can only upgrade everything at once. I mean, like you can you can do an upgrade from like E to E3 for the whole business. Uh -huh. But if you go pick off just part of the cuts, like 10 users at a time, it says oh, I'm going to charge you your uh, cancellation fee. Oh, my customers do it all the time. Um, so, have you tried calling the support number? Yeah, I did that one time, and you know, I went through all the hoops, and I got they refunded it, and I'm like, yeah. And, and unfortunately, on. that's what you're going to have to do. They just changed uh, a little bit now, but uh, I did just notice last week I was in the portal, and they finally added an option where we can we can cancel something inside of the portal on the yeah. licenses right. because before you used to always have to make a call into support. Um, but what I want to say to you with caution is test it out and if you see the cancellation fee, pick up the phone and call okay. support because that's how that's still going to be the only true way to get around it. Okay, this gentleman here, then we'll do the back row next. Um, um, so I'm a little bit confused about the RDS rights. If you, I think we said if you buy the small business premium, then you can buy one of the keys to use that has RDS install rights. So does that mean that those users with the small business premium, they after October 1, we can't tell you until the plans are released. So at the moment, right, today, here now, small business plans are not licensed for RDS. Okay. Only M and better. Okay. So, we, so we, don't actually, we don't know that? After October 1, we're only speculating. Okay. Okay? The small business plans, after October 1, will not support RDS rights. Mm -hmm. okay? It would seem to me that the logical way is to buy an additional plan that's an enterprise which supports RDS and combine the two, which you can now do. But I asked that question on Friday and stumped the team. So again, we've got to wait for the end. Corner pocket. So when the, okay, I, I, I have two questions. One is, I, there's been some discussion, I was at another event and they talked about that there's a trade-off about whether you buy the whole thing, uh, the uh, buy Office 360, or whether you rent it. Because you, you go to Best Buy or whatever, and at least at that time, you could, you could just buy the, the uh, buy, like you buy office. Yeah, you can buy perpetual that way. Yeah, uh. and, and the, there was some discussion about there's a trade-off depending upon the size of your organization <coughs> and how many seats you have and so on, which is the best option. So does anybody have any clue about that? I'll tell you my answer. So my answer that I tell my customers between perpetual and 365 licensing for office professional. The thing I always ask them is, do your users need to work from home? And, it, and do they have 
devices like iPads? Do they need to get access to information from phones, like documents and things like that? Um, part of the reason why I ask those questions is because typically the answers are yes, for a few users we need to do that, or you know, yes, I have remote workers. And, and there's a difference, just to go through very quickly, but there's a difference between open with software assurance and the Office 365 subscription. And the difference is with open with software assurance, you get as a home user one extra copy to be able to use, and you have to choose if you have a Mac or a PC. With Office 365, you get five copies, five devices. And so you might have a home user that has a Mac and a PC, plus a desktop, plus a laptop for travel. And we get to accommodate up to five devices per user without having to worry about licensing audits and things like that. So the benefit that I tell them is if you have users that are working from home or we know they have multiple devices, go with the Office 365. Yes, you're paying per month, but look at the value that you're going to get based on the number of devices that you're going to have to support with an Office license attached to it. Uh, hang on. Go ahead. And then I, I a couple things. I don't see access up there. Is that a, is that right. a mistake? It's been removed. Office change, there's no more access. Oh, so this book, oh, this book is no longer valid? There's no more access? <laughs> Not in the small business plan. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, these plans. <laughs> it's an add-on. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, so they're called Office 365 Business, Business Essentials, and Business Print. So these are not E? No. No, no this is But you can mix them with them. Yeah. These, these are... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think, I think <laughs> we're next, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You can your question. Okay, so to, uh, two, two parts. And follow up on this uh, RDS conversation. So, just so I get it straight, we've got a terminal server in the environment. <coughs> Traditionally, we had to just buy an open license copy of Office to drop on there. And, I mean, could you, you can't do that, is what you're saying. You can't. Oh, you could. Yeah, so people have changed it. They that. used to have to buy a license. Now you can install on an RDS server with click to run. Yeah, but whatever. It's 400 bucks. No, no, no. No, you use one of the licenses you download. You use the if Office you, deployment tool. Yeah. And that pulls the click to run down with the login and password, creates like an ISO image on the machine. Yeah. And then you run another switch and it installs it on the RDS box. You don't need to buy media, you don't need to buy VL key. If you put your, that's only if you have an E SKU that we've established. An E or an M. Oh, right now. Right now. <laughs> and after October 1st, it'll only be the, the E. It, correct, exactly. Which leads to the second half, which is if, uh, we've established one thing in this weekend is that people get their information about pricing off the internet and then they come to us later. Um, and us is supposed to be a bunch of small business servers, people, which means. We had networks that were 25 and 50 node, not 300 or 8,000. So talking about E seems kind of a little irrelevant if you don't if you don't need the telephony part of it, um, if you don't need the e-discovery, the advanced exchange features, which I had a, a peer in here give me great arguments for why those were cool. Mm -hmm. He's an E3 only guy too. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, heard, I took that input for what it was worth. But in our little, you know, 10, 25, we just bought a new phone system from Integra. We don't need, sure. you know. But, but a, a, you a know, small law firm gets requirements from their bank. It's just, uh, do you have e-discovery? Yeah, so I'm not hearing five that people. from them. So I'm yeah. just saying, if they don't have a compelling reason, I don't see any reason to even talk about those SKUs, uh, other than they, those extra features. Am I off base sure. with that? Or I mean, M hey, seems hey, like the no-brainer. Uh, okay, and you, it's OK. I mean, if you prefer M, personally for me, I don't do, I don't do M. It's just me, I just prefer the E. Well, and the reason why is because you're stuck on an island in the M world. Just we're, like you're stuck on an island in the P world, we're too. We're stuck on the SPS island. <laughs> but, but with E, you just have so much flexibility. So even E1 you know, or E3, you can get away with it. There's a price differentiator. And yes, they get more features, but you just get so much more flexibility to shift and move. 
than you do with the others. But the only people that have come to me and said, hey, what about Office 365, which is not all my clients, uh -huh. they're like, what, it's like four bucks a month or something, right? Because they're seeing the other marketing. Sure. Yeah. And already I'm like, mm, it's $12.50. And they're like, geez, that's like three times as much. But now we're saying, no, you really need to pay 20 bucks. Oh. And they're gonna be like, never mind. No, but it that's is. where, you know, Robert had mentioned selling on the features. That's where yourself is really going to make that difference. I have people coming to me as well saying, you know, oh, I just want $4 a month, I can totally do it. Why am I paying so much? And once I talk to them through the rationale that makes sense for their business use case, they're like, sign me up, I'm in, I'm good. So what, what do you think I would sell? How would I sell E3 above anything? What's the thing I would lead with with E3? What's the benefit to an end user in their eyes of E3? SharePoint. Besides, SharePoint. now they all get SharePoint. <laughs> What's the benefit? Yeah. No, keep going. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. Bash all the plans. The reality is E3 gives you an unlimited inbox. Mm -hmm. Fill it up as much as you want with as much crap as you want. I don't care. It's unlimited. It includes the archiving, the unlimited archiving. That's exactly. $3 yeah. extra per month, usually a la carte. And that sells them. We're the guys that took the two gig small business limit and immediately made it one gig. <laughs> so that's that's a real thing. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you, you. <laughs> so the, and the forlorn thing during that for his deal, at least tell them if you want to change for four bucks, at least stay here in the archives. You can you can add on the right. different fees down the road. So do what you want to do for a favor. Don't sell them to your end. Don't so yeah. we have friends. Don't let friends do yeah. P plans. <laughs> and if you want friends, don't do M plans. No, I told you. What do you got, Harry? Yeah. But if you uh, sold M plans, I come and smack you on the head. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll tell you, we'll take this question next. Um, yeah, actually, I'll question the same. On the, the click to run versus volume license, what I run into the house with the click to run, you've got the creating live accounts to do that. So, how are you doing with the volume? Why do you sell as soon as the volume buys the digital cards in the store? And then I like, log into the Microsoft account. And that's, account. that's consumer click to run. This is enterprise click to run. Yeah. Completely different. So, how is that? You don't. You license that. You've got a licensed user. When you want to pull it down, you either install it from the portal, <laughs> logging in as that user. So you don't do it to log into the domain account, like you do an enterprise version. Yeah. 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 You read. Have a look yeah. at the Office Deployment Toolkit, right. and it'll show you everything. XML file and your PowerShell it up, baby, and it's done. Blow it out to the machine. And the uh, hypothetical I put first: Is there any word about? Oh, I'm sure you could do it. I mean, it gives you the full, I haven't gone into it, but you've got a full XML customization. You can add your own options. You can determine, once you download it to a network install point, you can control how often the updates are actually pushed to the clients. You can control whether they get the latest update or you wait five releases. That's cool. So what I mean, though, is like right now, the only way, the only way to get the partner to build directly is to do volume license. Okay, there's a new, I know there's a new Microsoft program they're talking about, but yeah, it's okay. all speculation. But they are talking about it, definitely. But the problem is you're going to have to make minimum requirements, which are quite, going to be quite large, I believe. Your turn. Uh, on, you, I thought you talked about SharePoint being different between the, um, the Yeah, baby, SharePoint. hugely different. Two versions of SharePoint, Plan 1 and Plan 2. Plan 2 gives you Excel services, access services, e-discovery, high-end features. That's available in E3 and above. Every other plan is SharePoint Plan 1. Yeah. But e, if you're on an E-plan, as we've mentioned, you've got the flexibility for any user to go to Plan 2. Yeah. M-plan is one, exchange Plan 1. And oh, there, there are some, some users where, for whatever reason, they just need SharePoint standalone. And with the e-SKUs, you can actually add SharePoint standalone users. So you don't have to have a pure E1. You don't have to stay in a pure E3 bucket. You can mix and match with the a la carte options that are available to you too. Uh, go, go ahead, Sean. Am I, am I correct that the P and the M plans are only going to be available if you buy them the next two days? Yes. And they also the other thing that they said in one of the other, other sessions yeah. is that if you do buy the P or the M plan, that the limit is going to 300 as of October 1st, even on those three plans. That you only have, that's what Microsoft said. 
I double check it because that's some of the information well, I would have. Because they said they're changing the technological. They're not going to publish it, but it goes to 300. Isn't it in your car? Actually, it's you only can buy yeah, right it now it's in the... Guys, it's no, that's a new plan. Yeah. Yeah. They've already posted some of this to ready to go. You have to dig yeah. a little bit. Right there. But it is 300 for... But that's the new plan. Yeah. He's talking about the old plan. The, the old plan. Old yeah, plan. Yeah, yeah. So your grandfather did on the... So your grandfather did on the old plan if you buy it in the next 48 hours. Special sale, fine price. Um, but you're saying programmatically they, they are going to flip the change, debt. Yeah, because no, I, oh, I can technology. see that just knowing how Microsoft yeah. works. I can see them silently flipping the bed. Now, again, pure speculation opinion, but having worked here, I can see them doing that and not publishing well, this, that. This, is, okay. this is what the team said when we had the other session. Yeah, yeah. Earlier. Um, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of things they don't block, guys. The five... I'll tell you what I did. Harry. Think yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right. And I, I, I'm at Microsoft. I better be careful. Okay. <laughs> so, this is a slightly different conversation. It's an administrative question. So I, I, I got a lot of customers that they went online, they signed up, they blew it up, and then they got a hold of me. So now I go into their account using the top dog's email password and create a uh, user who's an admin that doesn't take the email, so it's not a license. Is there another way to do this? Is there a, any kind of an umbrella administrative console? There available? is for you as a partner. Um, so you <coughs> should be using what's called internal usage rights. And what ends up, and you would sign up as cloud accelerant. So here's the reason why I'm telling you that. When those two things are together in your world underneath your partner ID, then you can log into your tenant and you get this at, into your own Office 365 tenant. And out on the right hand side is a little button that says partner. And when you click on partner, it gives you a list of, your, of all of the people that you have as attached customers. And you can click on that and then manage you know, their 365 tenant, you can add users, those kind of things. There's a lot of things you can do. There's a couple that you can't, but the majority of that stuff is available right from you when you sign into your your partner portal and see the partner. Thank list. you, Harry. Uh, All right, uh, sir, go ahead. I have another question for the comfort study. Okay. <laughs> so after your session the other night, I spent a long time poking around on our partner site, and it looks to me like the Cloud Accelerate program disappears uh, within just like a week of being with our customers. It will disappear, but it's actually being grandfathered in a little bit longer, and it's going to roll up into a small and mid-sized market um, competency. So you, the reason why I'm still telling you about it is, number one, it's available, number two, it's being extended, and number three, um, when you start enrolling in that piece of it now, even though you don't meet the requirements right away, you'll still be able to automatically grandfather into that new competency. So just quick follow up. I think we may have shot ourselves in the foot because my partner apparently signed us up for the cloud accelerator and we're about to time out without yeah. having achieved enough. That's okay. Risk you so just re enroll. Could, you can just re enroll. Yeah, you can just re enroll. They, they, they don't oh, penalize oh, you. Oh, oh, oh. So here's one thing that I'll tell you that's wonderful about 365 and the competencies just in general compared to Dynamics. So Dynamics has something called a CSA. And a CSA is basically you being a sales advisor, and, and that's how you're able to get a percentage up front on the deal. Um, but with CSA, you can have one person that's certified, so that's good for the small business person, one, two shop partners. But the other thing is that if you don't meet the requirements that they expect you to in the year, you're kicked out of the program for a year and you, and you can't get back in and you have to re-enroll after a year is left. With the rest of the competencies, it's not that way. So if you enroll and you don't meet that hurdle, it's okay. You just re-enroll and there's no penalty or timeout or anything like that. That's cool. Yeah. Wow, that's a feel-good program. Yeah. It is. That must have been they made have in the Pacific Northwest. They have plenty of left for us. Oh, it's yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not what you say from a feedback. Yeah. 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 So we're going to go back and talk to them again. Yeah, double-check and... 
Yeah, with them. Got about 10 minutes left, so uh, I'll, I'll take yours, but I'd love to hear from this <laughs> side of the room, maybe something we haven't heard from, but, but go ahead. Sir. I have a follow up to the other question about the partner portal, and I think I asked this in Robert's SharePoint session the other day. So if you're doing SharePoint administration on behalf of your client, what, what's the best practice there to do the license? Do the so full license on the client tenant. So you need to use. And, the the, and, you, saw, and you, you understand why that was the case? Yeah, I explained I explained that. that last yeah. night. I just wonder if they're the best. So you just get their sign in or you say you got to buy a license and you can do administration for it. Or use somebody's existing license. Okay. Unfortunately, yeah. it was abused in BPOS. Right. They right. turned it off. That's why. Well, actually, hang on a second. Because in the, um, in the SharePoint tenant, when you go in there, it's the equivalent of central administration. That's like the online version of central administration. And in there is an option for you to be added as how you're added as POR. You're basically adding your company. It recognizes the POR in there. And I can't remember the button, but it's along the top bar. I so want to sign into my portal right now to show you. But it's basically like four <coughs> buttons over. And when you click on it, you associate your partner. And then you can just sign in with your regular credentials, and it'll you use that name, so it's like companyname.sharepoint.com. When you log in and you register with your access, it puts you right through and you get full access rights. So if you don't wanna go through the portal option, I would tell you in the client, to Robert's point, the first time you do it, you have to go in underneath like an admin or underneath so somebody's name. You can sign in as a client, yep. set yourself up as that. Yes, thing. and it's, then you yeah. get full rights. Is it under the partner area for that client? It's underneath the SharePoint area. So when you go into administration under SharePoint, it's like four buttons over on the first option. Where It's the same place in SharePoint where you go um, when you see all of the search paths. So it's, it's all of the URLs, right? But it's in that panel and it's like four buttons over. And you click on that and you can choose yourself because you're POR. As long as you're POR, that option's available. It seems like you've done this before, Melanie, have you? I do it for every single one of my clients on SharePoint, so, yes. Thank you. I feel like Question you know what you're talking about. Side, someone we haven't heard from. We've got uh, about five minutes left at this point. You better point. look up behind you. Yeah, <laughs> it's under, yeah, click on one of those options, and then, um, yeah, add support partner. That's what it is. And then you find yourself, <coughs> as long as you're POR, and then that's how you're able to get it. <coughs> started as a training company for end users. And we were the lifeline and provided productivity training to help people be more productive in their day. And then share, our SharePoint consulting practice evolved because we were doing these contracts with companies on SharePoint, for example. And they came to us and they said, we don't have the bandwidth to roll this out. Can you, can you do the work for us? And I mean, you know, we're fine. We can do all that work. We teach it, all of that. So we said, okay, fine. And that's how our SharePoint practice honestly was born. But because we came from an end user training environment, and that's what we specialized in, we created a help desk support just naturally because of the consulting practice that was needed and help desk training, you know, or help desk support for end users just evolved naturally because we were already working with the end users and training them. We already know it, we teach. So for me, it was pretty natural in progression to have that help desk option available and to be able to offer that to them. Um, sometimes we do it in two minute video reference clips. So, you know, for example, there's constant help desk support tickets that you see over and over for the same exact thing. And so one of the recommendations that we'll do is to do a two minute video clip 
and just have that posted for them to be able to see, I hope on SharePoint, but whatever they choose. And then that way they're able to look at it on demand and for their leisure. Um, the other thing that we do for them is quick reference guides. So again, top help desk tickets, creating quick reference guides as a knowledge base for them. That way it reduces the support ticket calls constantly that we see for those same kind of things. But, but that's honestly how we handle it. It just became a natural thing because of the way that the company started. So Robert, your reply to that will be the, the, the final conversation. We're at time and unfortunately, uh, because it's the end of the conference, that triggers the security agreement we have with Microsoft and the technical mm -hmm. staff and so on. So I guess the conversation could certainly kind of continue on down at the Marriott and the bar. <laughs> So Robert, do you want to reply? Yeah, my, my practice is project-based. Okay, so I work per project. I don't do you know, ad hoc support and that sort of thing. It's all rolled into a project and it's covered. Okay, so but I use similar techniques like videos, help cards. And for me, a lot of it is, is the process I put in place is proof of concept so that you get a feeling, required training, required follow-up. That's what it is. If client doesn't take that on board, fine. Please just double. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, audience, and thank you, Pat.